All right, everybody. Uh, we will have 10 minutes for each coach and a little wiggle room at the end if we need. Uh, I'm going to start with just asking the coach for a general statement. If you have a question, what I'd ask you to do then is uh, let me know in the chat and then I will call on everybody. Um, we'll try to get in as many questions as you can. So, um, coach, if you'd just like to start general thoughts on this upcoming season. Well, obviously excited about it, just like everybody else is at this time of year. N none of us have won a game or lost a game yet. So we're thrilled about it. Uh, Mother Nature has not been super cooperative in the state of Kentucky anyway, um, but we've gotten a lot of good work in and we're looking forward to it. It's, um, you know, I mean, it, it's almost a full year since some of these guys have played an actual competitive game of baseball. Uh, so I'm happy for them. I am grateful to the administrators. I, I think personally, uh, I think the OVC, the athletic directors, the presidents, I think everybody involved has really turned themselves inside out to give all of our student athletes an opportunity to compete and do the thing that they love. Um, and so we're really excited about it. Uh, specific to our season, uh, we've got a good test with UNCC coming up next week. And then obviously, you know, as we get into the conference schedule, we, we've got um, good rivalries and, and, and great teams in the conference. And this is going to be actually my first, hopefully, full go around in the thing. So we're excited about it. Thanks, Coach. If anybody has a question for Coach, just uh, let me know down in the chat and I'll call on you. But I'll start off. Um, you alluded to it, you know, last year was your first season. It only lasted 15 games. So, um, you know, back when you were hired to where we are now, how can you just translate that into basically a lot of unknown? You, you've got some players, but now it's been so long and you haven't even played an OVC game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, at the beginning of the year last year was a little, little rough for us. I mean, I, I will say that I think that we played a, a really competitive, competitive schedule. Um, and played against some teams with some pretty lofty records in the 15 or 20 games that most of the division one teams got in last year. Um, but I, I, it was also, a, I think a huge transition, right? That uh, the kids are playing with a new head coach, new head coaches, you know, competing with new kids. Uh, there were, I think six position players off of that team that were really significant contributors that we were trying to make adjustments for. Um, so I think that over the past, year, whether it's by Zoom or whether it's been in person or any other sort of means, I think we've all gotten a, a much greater comfort level with one another. I think we know what to expect from one another. I know that uh, whatever standards that we have that might have been a little bit different from Coach Max, our guys are used to now. Um, and so I, I think if I were to say anything, I think it's just, I think we are ready to just compete and play baseball rather than getting adjusted to each other. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Joe Healy, Baseball America. Joe, go ahead with your question. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, one of the unique coaching challenges that not just you yourself are in the OVC, but everywhere are dealing with those different schedules this year. I mean, there's been a lot of shifting around and, and you guys are going to be dealing with double headers every weekend. And I'm curious how you and your staff have, how that knowing that has changed maybe how you're thinking about bullpen usage or how you set up your pitching and, and how that has been expressed and, and what you're preparing for this season? Well, the, the schedule thing has been unbelievable, right? Um, and I, I, I would guess that we'll probably have to even be ready to adjust even more from, from week to week or every couple of weeks as um, some of the things come up. But um, it, I, I think the, the one big thing for me is for our relievers, um, as we've prepared them, we, I think we've tried to prepare them to simply be able to go back to back days, right? Um, you know, not obviously 45 pitches back to back days, but maybe 15 to 20 pitches and then be able to go 15 to 20 pitches the next day because three games is getting com compressed into, into two days rather than three days. Um, strangely, there'll probably be a little bit more time off between the weekend and a midweek if, if teams are playing midweek games this year. So uh, it, it's a little unusual in some of it, um, but early on in the year, um, you know, not against UNCC, but in our following two weekends, we'll, we'll play double headers on, on both of those weekends. Um, and, and, you know, I think at this point, even in a normal year with the way the weather is and things like that, guys, you know, I mean, I think in our last full season, I, I would guess that of the 14 weekends, we, we probably played double headers on probably half of those weekends. So it, it is something 
that our guys are accustomed to. Just, I think the big thing that the big messaging is is just being able to be adaptable. If anybody else has a question, just let me know down in the chat. Uh, Coach, when I was thinking of different things for this, there's a lot of negative questions you can ask, like how's your team deal with this disappointment last year. But I want to know, and you alluded to it a little bit, but what is the positive that's come out of, of you know having last season cut short, but maybe coming closer together or something that you've changed the way you do things that will help you going forward? Um, I think I think for us specifically, it's the the, the ability to have had spent more time with one another and get used to each other a little bit more. That, that's so certainly one of the silver linings. I hope that for college baseball, for athletics, for all of us in every walk of life, regardless of what we do, I, I, I hope that um, we begin to understand a little bit more what, you know, the, how important personal connections are to one another, right? Um, as I look at my three children who are all school-age children, it's it's hard for them. It's hard for them to be in this virtual environment, which is where they've been for the for almost a year now. And um, that that chance to, you know, to just run up to each other and, and hug hug somebody else or give somebody a high five and and not have to think about it and all of those things. I think it should make it, hopefully it just makes us all all the more grateful for when a little bit of normalcy comes back to it, to be grateful, to be able to play our game. They're grateful to even, <laughs> to even go to class. Right. I mean, I think those things are things that if I ask my 15 year old son, like, Hey dude, like, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to going to school, dad. You know, you know, like, I mean, when's the last time that came out of a 15 year old's mouth? Uh, Van Stokes, go ahead with your question. Hey coach, uh, a belated congratulations to the OVC. I did not have a chance to catch up to you last year. Uh, but I'm with the Governor Sports Network at Austin P, and also a fellow alumnus of Ohio University Sports Administration. Oh, program. nice. All right. So it's always good to see uh, Dr. Higgins and James Lavery's uh, protégés uh, step forward and do, and do good things. I, I looked at the stats from last year. Granted, it was only 15 games, um, but what concerned you the most? Was it your pitching or was it your hitting from last year? And I say that question plain and simply because you were on the bottom portion of the OVC teams in the preseason portion of the year. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think if you look at it really quickly, it's you know the pitching is the thing that that stands out the most, you know. Um, but again, I think there were just there's a lot of different moving parts to to some of it. Um, we were in the transition from Coach Mack leaving to to my arrival here. We lost a couple of kids that were both on the team and kids that were supposed to be on the team as freshmen or junior college transfers coming in. Um, we had a couple of pretty significant injuries to arms, so we were a little bit short. Um, so there were times where you might have taken somebody out of the game that you sort of let them kind of gut it out for you for the, for the sake of saving the rest of the weekend in your bullpen and different things like that. So that was a little bit ugly. I, I do feel like from a hitting standpoint, we were beginning to be okay. And I, and I think that we'll, we'll have a, a fairly solid offensive team here this year. Um, there's a couple of places that we have to figure some things out in the outfield and, and things of that nature. But I think that um, we'll be much improved in all of those areas. So um, while yes, you look at those stats and you can get a little bit concerned about it, I'm not not really obsessing about it. I think that we have uh, we have much greater depth and quality depth throughout our pitching staff. I think offensively, I don't know that we're necessarily gonna be a hit the ball over the fence type of a team, but I think that we'll be a pretty good offensive team. and. Defensively in the infield, I think we might. I think we have a chance to be as good as anybody in the country. We've got two more questions in the queue. I'm going to try to get to both of them. Mike Paris, go ahead. Sorry, got to get myself unmuted. Uh, Coach, I'm at Jacksonville State doing a radio broadcast here on the Gamecock Sports Network. I was just interested, your seniors, did they take advantage of the opportunity to come back with the year that was granted to the NCAA? Well, they did. Yeah. Um, uh, two guys chose to um, take that last year and, and transfer someplace else after they had graduated, but the rest of our seniors did come back. Um, and it, it really does make for some incredibly interesting, you know, rosters. I mean, we've got Jason Go, who, who's been here, I think, six years or something now. He actually could probably petition the NCA for a seventh. Um, you know, I feel like it's like watching the the old BYU teams after they've taken their mission and you feel like there's this guy, you know, that that's been there for like a hundred years. Um, but it's uh, yeah, but all of our seniors just did choose to come back and play. 
We'll squeeze in one more, Joe. You, Joe Healy, you had a follow-up question. Go ahead. Yeah, I was actually going to ask Coach about about Cole Becker and the preseason information we received from you guys. You you mentioned him as someone who stood out really in the fall at, at shortstop, and I imagine he would have to in order to move. You know, got an athlete the quality of Logan Goodnight to the outfield. So, tell us a little about about him and, and what impressed you so much about him early on. Uh, he, he's he's really just um, you know from a defensive standpoint, just outstanding, um, athletic. Good arm, uh, really good instincts. He's, uh, in terms of just thinking the game on the defensive side of the ball, he's he's outstanding. And I think it became more and more apparent the more he played that he was the guy that we needed to make a move to at, at shortstop. Um, you know, Logan, as you said, is a tremendous athlete. And I think he's a guy that part of making it easy was the fact that Logan could transition and has transitioned pretty darn well into the outfield. So um, I, I think it's a move that strengthens our team from a defensive standpoint and um, addresses some of the stuff that we need in the outfield anyway. Well, Coach, we appreciate your uh, your time this morning and uh, best of luck and uh, best of weather to you and your team. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, you guys.